welcome to another Women Lead TV show brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist. Wait, I'm with Michelle Beauchamp, <laughs> but I'm your host today of, <laughs> of Women Who Take the Lead. And I want to th just welcome Michelle Beauchamp with the Champ Group. And I'm loving it that we're both Michelle. So I Michelle, know. we both I'm look. Michelle. What's who else? <laughs> the correct way to spell Michelle. So we'll get some feedback on that, I'm we sure. Will, yeah. <laughs> so here's what I want to talk about today, Michelle. You know, there's all these you know, studies about women starting businesses at twice the rate of men, right? And I know you had quite a journey and you coming from corporate America and starting your business. Right. And I'd love for you to tell our listeners, it's like what, it, it was a process for you. I mean, oh, yeah. you, you started your bit, <laughs> yeah, and that's what I want to hear. Like what was the process that it took you to finally leave corporate America? Okay, thank you. That's a great you, question. You got it. I knew that I wanted to do the CHAMP group full time. And I started it part time four years ago. LinkedIn told me the other day. Congratulations! Four on years ago. Congratulations! So, so for four years, I've been building a champ group, and I just recently started building it full time in September. So I'm in month five now. Congratulations! Thank Man, you. I'm so sorry because it's a br it's a struggle. It's always you know a what? struggle. It's interesting. And I started it, and I was working full time, and you know I was always busy. But every single evening, most evenings and most weekends were busy because I had a lot that I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. I am certified speaker coach trainer with the John Maxwell team, which gives me access That's to awesome. a ton of content. Yeah. And that means there was a lot to to learn. Was it a certification? Is that what it's you went through? It's a certification. Oh. Oh, okay. And there's okay. and and because there's so much content, right. and there's so, but that means that there's so many opportunities. So Got that's it. what that translated as. So I was spending so much time reading and studying and practicing. Then, I, but I always knew that I wanted to do it full time. And you know, the journey was when is it the right time? And in my vision board, mm -hmm. I had pictures that said, "Take the leap and." believe and all that motivation you know, all that motivation stuff you know so I had to do a new vision board this year by the way because it wasn't relevant anymore because I did finally take that leap so here you have to do one that says all in I all have in yeah now. I didn't have I don't have that on there I have a new <laughs> one now though but I need all in that's a good that's one that's it so you know the thing that motivated me to really leave was uh, it, it had to happen at some point mm -hmm. I, I it was a passion and I didn't want to wonder what it would have been like if I did it yeah. and not do it. You know, so I was worried about the pain of regret. And I just didn't want the pain of regret. You <sighs> regret know? is a, it's a tough word. I didn't want that, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> so there was that. So I knew that it was time. A you know, and, and at the job, my office finished in first place. And so I felt too like, okay, now I feel complete. I mm -hmm. feel as though I built a solid team mm -hmm. and we achieved what the company loves that we achieved. Right. And so I wanted to go out on a high note. And so and I did. did. Yeah. You know, Michelle, back up a minute because this is what's so crazy. You know, they, they say, and I remember this for me when I left corporate America because I was in commercial banking right. and corporate banking. And it's like this gentleman told me years ago, he said, you know, there's just a tipping point where all of a sudden working for somebody else doesn't work anymore. And, and they called it kind of this you know, entrepreneur hook, that once you cross over, right. it's just there's nothing corporate America can do to entice you and keep you. And I'm right. curious, what, where was that for you? You right. know, because I know you were in it to win it till the end, but where was the, the tipping point that you said, you know what, I gotta be an entrepreneur, this just ain't working for me anymore? Because you know what, a couple things, Michelle, I um, have had businesses in the past. Mm -hmm. So I knew the joy yeah. that I felt when I was running my business. And it wasn't so much that I was the boss. You know what it was? It was me identifying what I felt was right mm -hmm. and putting together, what making decisions. In my corporate job, seriously, they weren't really wanting me to make many decisions. Uh, it was really, we somewhere corporate have these ideas right. and we want for you to roll them out. And, mm -hmm. and I wasn't connected to those. And you're an idea girl. I'm an idea person yeah. and I want to do it. I'm a let me go do it. And I know you're that way. Let's do it and we're going to learn the lessons along the way. <laughs> There's a term for it. It's called make stuff up as you go. But we, <laughs> that's the philosophy I have. Okay, I like that. <laughs> so I wasn't able to do that. And finally, 
I just made the decision. And you know what yeah. was important is that I had the support of my husband. Right. You know, so that was really That's important. That's got to be special. I, yeah, and we planned it. You know, we mm -hmm. planned it, and it wasn't going to be time three years ago. And mm -hmm. and so it, you know what, it, it fell into place. And I and I'm totally a believer. So I think God had it all planned out for yeah. me, and I really appreciate that, and, and I'm really grateful. And so now I'm on a whole new journey. Here we are. <laughs> and you know what I love about you, and I, I will say, you know, you're part of Connected Women of Influence, and love that you're a part of our association. But what's been interesting to me in seeing you take the full-time leap, because right, because we were we were together at that point. Right. It's watching how focused and motivated you are to be mm. able to just that drive. And 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 I want you to touch a little bit about ambition, because there's so many people that say, oh, ambitious is a bad thing sometimes mm. for women, or mm. we get tagged in not a good way for being ambitious. So I'm curious what you might have to say, because I'm like, go get your ambition on, is what I say, and I think you do too. But oh, tell yeah. a little okay. bit about how you because you are I mean amazingly oh well thank you Michelle thank you and you know what I, I appreciate you saying that and you know what I am I really have always been the kind of per I'm very goal-oriented yeah I mean I write the annual goals the quarterly goals the monthly goals the weekly goals <laughs> and, Dang. okay I need to take some lessons from <laughs> so you, I'm, I'm very goal-oriented and um, I've had to really work at not beating myself up mm. for not getting those goals done so for wow. me, ambitious, it, to be honest, it's really just who I am. I believe that God has great things in store for me. Mm -hmm. And I read an interesting book many years ago, so some people might not want it, but it's called The Prayer of Jabez. What's and it called? The Prayer of Jabez, Jabez by Bruce Wilkinson. Okay. And there was a chapter in that where the guy went into a room where there were a lot of unopened boxes, white boxes wrapped with red ribbons, and I thought you were going Tiffany. Sorry. Uh, no, like, they, no, they weren't Tiffany. Okay. But they could be, depending on what you created. But right? a room full of boxes? I'm excited. <laughs> Keep going. And the point to that was, what if you didn't take advantage of the opportunities that oh. are already in store for you? Wow, that's powerful. And so that book, I'll, as you can tell, it, it always resonated with me. Yeah. So for me, ambition means maximizing the opportunities that are ready for us mm -hmm. and and not to sit around and watch you know they say there's three kinds of people okay that's good. okay so one kind of person is who who's watching what happened mm -hmm. the other kind of person is wondering like scratching their head like what just happened? And then there's the person who goes and makes it happen I and, like that and person. I want to be that person yeah. who goes to make it happen that is you to a T <laughs> That is you to a T. You know, what would be some advice you might give some of our audience, right, and our also our um, listeners and watchers and um, YouTubers that you can say, if you're going to go start a business, here's like Michelle's four-step process. Like, mm. what, what, what would be those wise lessons you would share? Because I know you think fast on your feet. Okay, well, let's see Noodle how I do it. Here. Yeah, okay, okay, pressure, Michelle. pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> Yeah. So first of all, we need to understand what our passion is. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you, we can't, we can go start a business, but being able to move through the challenges that occur. Because mm. mm, there will be many. There are many. <laughs> so if we're not passionate about it, then mm -hmm. we might not stick with it. So first of all, identify the passion. And then you know what I'm a big believer in? It's work within your strength level. Ooh, so like really that. take an assessment of yourself. What are you struck? So you might be passionate about it, but you, you might not be good at it. Like, I, I like going to watch people sing. I cannot sing. So <laughs> Do you want to try right now? No, no. Okay, we're you don't want me to that. try. Yeah. That's a no. That's so, a no. So know what your passion is <laughs> and know what you're strong in. And you know yeah. what? Build on your strength. And then take the time to learn. I mean, I, for me, like I said, I was spending a lot of time studying and mm -hmm. learning because I want to get it right and and I also know that I'm 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 always going to be learning and, and I'm hoping yeah. that and, and I did just have a birthday so let me tell you the, the birthdays are starting to stack up <laughs> no, no, but, just a year better but, uh, never there older. you go and then you're wiser right yeah. so I um, I really want to encourage people to take the time to know the craft and 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 then the other thing I would say is don't be afraid to tell people about it I mean you know my expertise mm -hmm. is sales and so but you, you can't you can't get what you want if you don't ask for it. And the worst thing that anybody can ever say is no. And I tell people, and you know what, I've been told no, and I'm still living and breathing to tell about it. So be willing to open your mouth and ask for help. 
period. Ask for help, whether it means you need somebody to help you figure something out. Or advice. Or you need some advice, or you need somebody to buy what you have. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask. That was four, right? It is totally four, and you could go on with more. See how you just yeah. like, kind of like <laughs> make stuff up. I love it, but this is true, and this is real. And you know, one of the things that I see over and over, Michelle, especially with female entrepreneurs, is that Nobody said, I mean, this is such a trite phrase, right? Nobody wants to grow up and be in sales. Oh, Yet no. we're, we're well, all selling ourselves in some way, right? Good or bad, you know, right. right? how we come across. But I see women don't ask, women don't persist. You know, maybe those that are, that are there, but it's like you're doing something extremely relevant, getting, again, you're working with corporate, you're working with small businesses, but what do you always see of the big reason why women have such a tough time in the sales part of it because I see women struggle with that and I always kind of come back to they don't ask but if you don't have the person in front of you you got to get the person in front of you so you can ask right right what do you see there's a couple things I would say one is the mindset okay mm and people head do trash. Put, the head trash that people have and people do think that salespeople are pushy it's true and I mean when you it's funny whenever we should I'm, just say thank you it, when, <laughs> I'm okay to be pushy you right, right? You know, and, and I'm excited because you're, <laughs> because if you do it the right way you're not being pushy. yes right yes absolutely so, so it's funny whenever I'm teaching sales classes I say raise your hand if when you grew up you want to be in sales and there mm -hmm. and the hands never go up <laughs> so nobody ever wanted to be in sales however everybody's always got the responsibility to sell whether it's mm -hmm. our kids about doing something our spouse about doing something or selling something to a potential customer so yeah. we're always in sales so it's the mindset it starts with the mindset we have to make our mind up that if we engage enough and that's the second part of it then we will be able to determine whether or not people really need what we have so mindset one number two is behavior so the behavior is get rid of the get rid of the head trash and then ask build relationships with people mm -hmm. and ask find out and we don't mm -hmm. ask enough questions and I have some I was just gonna say questions are, you, are the power of are. sales it's ask. like it's that no one can say no to you if we just ask a question and you, right? right start the conversation and you know that's other thing I tell look all you're gonna do is have a conversation mm -hmm. here's the thing people think that they have to have all the answers mm. and so an awareness is you don't have to have all the answers right. you can always go find the answer later you just have to be able to have a conversation yeah. and ask questions yeah. because when you're asking questions, this is a key little nugget that people get are interested in. We're waiting for it. When, nugget, when nugget, you nugget. are the, the person who's asking the questions is the person who's in control. Ooh, that's a bam. So bam, bam, <laughs> so, bam. So so when we when our prospects or clients are asking us questions, we feel like we're in the hot seat. Yeah, and we have to answer those questions. And the reality, and because that customer or prospect is the one in control, because they're asking the questions, and we feel like we gotta have the answer. So we just have to be able to sit back, relax, and ask the questions. And then, depending on what question we ask and what their answer is, determines on what's the next question. So really, it's right. a conversation. And, so, and we have to be in front of enough people. So listen, I mean. See, what? I would call that an interrogation, but I like that word. Oh, see, now interrogate <laughs> people. I'm like, wrong, Yeah, I they know, don't want to feel like they're on a firing squad because it's going to gonna be a relevant I'm interrogating question. you today. You are, but, but we're, we're having a conversation. That. We're having, but we're having a conversation. Yeah. We're laughing. Yes. And, and guess what? That's what the situation can be with the prospect. Yeah. That's what people want to understand. I want people to understand. You, you know, it's not like you have to have all the answers. And when we were growing up, we were told mm -hmm. not to ask so many questions. Yes, and and we we get few. I mean, we get shut down. Right. Remember that? Because a kid, as kids, we were just like, why everything? Right. You, right. We hang with and the we two-year-old. Yep. Don't ask so many questions. And so we remember that. That took me back to childhood. You remember that? Yeah. And so what I that meant to us is you got squashed because mm -hmm. you were going to be nosy. So and a woman. A and as a woman. Sorry, had to go there. No, as a woman. Like, yeah. And so we have to just take ownership. By the way, to be honest, I think naturally women want to know more. I really think so. So we I can take this, advantage yeah. of that natural a talent that we have as women that's that's what we we want as women we want to know that's right so we need to ask and so when we're asking questions we're not being nosy mm -hmm. and we're not being pushy we're being inquisitive but it shows that we care 
And we're in control when we're asking questions. That's like a bam right there again. So we are out of time. I want to okay. say thank you, right, to Michelle Beauchamp with the Champ Group <laughs> for being our leading lady today thank on you. Women Lead TV. We're going to have you back for round two, round three, round four, awesome. round five. I love it. I love and it, you're Michelle. one of our hosts with.